Now tuned in the thoughts of a black sheep. And guess what? Got some thoughts. All right. I'm going to talk about this book right quick. This ebook I did see. You can go right down lulu.com. I think that's how you say it. And you can download the ebook. Um, it's a it's a three chapter book. I did three chapters because the people that need to read this book. They don't like to read. If I'd have made a 12 chapter book like I started to, I would have had a very hard time getting multiple so-called black men and women to read this thing because either they don't have time to read or they just don't want to read. Some of them probably can't read that good. So I made it a three chapter book, ebook. So maybe it's an e-booklet, but they didn't have a um, nothing I can name in an e-booklet. So I had to say it was an e-book. I got it for eight dollars and the everything that I get from this eight dollars is going to go to. I, I want to make the 12 chapter um, thing, but I was going to use these people and boy, whew, that stuff high. So but anyway, I'm going to do a, a, you know, a physical copy of this book one day. But right now it's just an ebook, a three chapter ebook, and it talks about the. I ain't lying. These are like three of the most powerful chapters you gonna read. Like it gonna get gonna give you a new perspective on everything. So it says this is a writing describing the hardships and turmoil the so-called black man go through in America. This writing will point out facts to support the idea that the black man is under attack. He is under attack in every aspect of his life. This writing is designed to bring awareness and help for not only the black man, but also the black woman. All right, let's read. We're going to read a little. Oh, and keep in mind, I'm just a, um, I, I wrote this and, you know, I'm not no English professor, so. Um, bear, if you find a mistake or something I did, bear with me. I had to proofread it myself. People wanted to charge way too much to proofread it. The dude who I, I got to proofread it, he pro he said he proofread it. He pointed out some good stuff that I needed to do or, or describe and change. And then, you know, we was going back and forth and all of a sudden he just stopped. He ain't want to talk about the, the um this no more. I don't understand what happened. You know, I want to say, I don't know, but that was weird to me, but I had to end up doing it myself. Okay, so I apologize if it's if anything that you see, but just listen at the, uh, the message. Okay. Dear black man, nobody like you by C. Simpson. Chapter one. Money, media, and the black man. If you're reading this, hopefully you know that everything in this place costs money. It's so bad that if you have no money, you can't find the means to get it. One can easily find himself homeless, wondering what the hell happened. What people don't get about money is it was created to control everything. Money was made to control all aspects of life, including but not limited to morals and better judgment. Money has infiltrated the hearts and minds of many, and many people in this case, black people, have sacrificed everything they believe in just to secure that bag. What you must know, black man, is the money that you so desperately need was never created for you. That's one reason why you have to use your body to work for it. It doesn't belong to you. When somebody has something, or in the case of money, it controls something that you need, Depending on how bad you want it, they can and will have you do anything and everything to get it. They, meaning the ones in control, use the system of money to purposely make living here a very challenging place for the black man to live. Right now, it's what is called July 19th of 2019. Now, the job I was on ended on May 22nd, 2019. Beginning May 5th of 2019, I began the process of looking for another job. So I started putting in all kinds of applications. 
just visualizing how much better life will be for my family if I work here or work there. Side note, not considering if I would be happy with what I'm doing, but will it benefit my family? I think most good men would agree that's how we think. Family first, then me. Anyway, today, July 19th, 2019, I noticed on a popular job site, I applied for 65 jobs on that site alone. From May 5th to July 19th, I filled out 65 applications. That's not counting the numerous other places I applied for. Guess what? As of right now, I haven't gotten a call, email, text, or nothing saying we want to interview you. Now, you're probably coming up with all kinds of reasons why I didn't get a call back. I truly believe that the majority of good paying jobs are reserved for certain people, fraternities, sororities, and special interest groups. Once you select your ethnicity as a black or African American, you can stand a chance of your application being sent to the good luck files. One would think I'm thinking too deep on this. Honestly, I wish I was thinking too deep because the the type of person I am, I wanted to prove to myself that I'm not seeing what I think I'm seeing or feeling what I think I'm feeling. So I remembered, I filled out an application for the Pennington Research Center here in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Baton Rouge, Louisiana, the same place that Alton Sterling, a young black man, was murdered by a Baton Rouge police officer. It shocked the whole city of Baton Rouge. I encourage you to look into the Alton Sterling case, the incident, and the outcome of the case. Once you see how everything happened and played out, you too will see one of the reasons I say, dear black man, nobody like you. Being that I'm in the city of Baton Rouge, what transpired with the Pennington Research Center it didn't come as a shock to me. Let me continue. Previously, I applied for a position at the Pennington using the ethnicity of a black or African American. After a few weeks, I was like, I wonder why I didn't get a call back. During this time, I'm watching this guy, Dane Calloway, saying that everyone that is so-called African American didn't come from Africa, but was already here in America and were called the Indians. That's an interesting topic to explore. If you are a so-called African-American, anyway, me being who I am, I went and did another application, but this time I put American Indian. I'm telling you, the next day, a lady from the Pennington called and scheduled an interview with me. I was like so shocked and amazed, but at the same time, something in me already knew how it was going to play out. Yes, I went to the interview. I must say, being a so-called black man has shown to me every day. Nobody likes you. Somebody should have seen the disappointing looks each person expressed. Long story short, I started the interview process. I had to meet with three different ladies in three different departments. The first lady was shocked to see to see she is interviewing a black guy. Honestly, the whole time I was there, I did not see one so-called black guy there. After I interviewed with the first lady, I'm more than certain she told the others that I wasn't an Indian. Well, at least what they have been taught and programmed the Indian looks like. 